Hi, I'm with Mike Supple of SuppleWine.com, and we're here to talk about how to read labels. We're starting with California. All right. So reading a label is something that's fairly easy if you know what you're doing. It's also fairly important if you don't know what you're doing. So if your friend invites you over to dinner and says, hey, come over to my house, bring a bottle of Cabernet. You don't just sort of sit in the other end of the phone going, Bleh. so you want to be able to go into the store and kind of you know, know what you're doing, maybe ask a few questions, but get yourself there. So here's the California wine label. Start out, easy piece of information. They always have the name of the producer. This one here is Canyon Road. Second thing. Most popular style of wines in California are the varietal based wines, and that means that they say on the label the main grape in there. This one right here, Cabernet Sauvignon. That means it's at least 75% Cabernet Sauvignon. That's a law in the United States. It's got to be at least 75% to have that name on the front. Zero percent so. beer, though. <laughs> yeah, well, at least in the U.S. In order to be there, so. uh, now, the important thing, they can put 25% of whatever else they want in there. It does have to be made from grapes, it has to be wine, but it can be anything else they want. It can be white grapes, it can be red grapes. Um, basically, the better producers are going to pick something they think makes it taste better. Some producers will use 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. Some might think it tastes a little better with 10% Merlot and make it a little bit softer. But basically, just, that's what you're looking for, is that, that name. Um, they're also going to have a region on each label. This one just says California. That just means that the grapes can come from anywhere in California. They didn't go with a specific region that tastes like certain things or that grows certain areas. It's just, you know, they could blend some grapes from Napa, from Sonoma, from the Central Coast. Oakland? They could blend some grapes from Oakland, San Francisco Bay. You never really know what's going on in those ones. Um, and let's see what other pieces. Are. Oh, they always tell you the alcohol. Alcohol by volume. That's important because it's really a tax thing. Certain levels of alcohol get different tax rates. So if it's below 14%, they call it table wine, and it's a lower tax bracket. And above that, they call it dessert wine, various other things that's uh, more expensive for tax purposes. Not for you, but for the winery. All right, so that was California. Now we're gonna get a little more specific, go with something you know. We're talking about Napa. All right, so this is still a wine from California, but the information on the label is a little bit different. Let's get a close look on there. So again, you're gonna have the producer. The name of this producer is Trefethen. Happens to be you know, one of my favorite Napa-based wines, but uh, that's not important right now. <laughs> so we're going, a few other things you might see on here. At the top, estate grown. That means that they actually own the vineyards and they grow the grapes that they use to make this wine. That other one we're looking there doesn't say that. It means they could have bought the grapes from anybody. A lot of people do this. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad if they buy the grapes. Some people have long-term contracts, so they buy the same grapes from the same guy or from the same place 20, 30, 40 years. But when it's estate grown, it generally means that since they own the vineyards, they have a little more control over the entire process. It usually means it's going to be a little bit higher quality. And probably more expensive as well. Well, right. That definitely, every time they spend more money and there's more quality, they bump the price up. Whether it's better or not, the price goes up. <laughs> so, again, you're going to see the year the wine was made. This was made in 2004. This is also a Cabernet Sauvignon. And that means it's got to be at least 75% Cabernet. This particular wine, let's see, they blend a little bit of, uh, I believe, Merlot. There's a little Petit Verdot. True. Maybe a little bit of Cabernet Franc in there. Again, it says estate grown. They own the same, these vineyards the other grapes are from, but they're not necessarily all Cabernet Sauvignon. And they do this because they feel adding those grapes just gives a little more complexity, a little, a little more nuances and whatever you want to add in there. The other major difference here, this says Oak Knoll District of Napa Valley. It doesn't say California. Now, that's called an American Viticultural Area, or an AVA. These are designated regions in the United States that the government and the growers have decided certain wines from these vineyards always have specific characteristics. And so again, they put that on there. Oak Knoll District is an AVA within the Napa Valley. It's something a little extra, it's something a little more designated. So again, it generally means the quality is going to be a little bit higher than something that just says California. It also means it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So basically what you're telling us is you're going to start out with the state, and then the larger region, and then the AVA. The smaller it gets, the farther you go down the line, uh, the more likely you are to have something very distinct. Correct. And, uh, but also, as Mike told you, they have to say it's 75% of one varietal if it's on the label, but sometimes there's nothing on that label at all. That's true. And again, it's just the most popular styles of wines in the United States are varietal labels. They will tell you what the wine is on the label, but they don't all. For example, this wine right here, the Inglenook Reunion. Now, you see, name of the producer, and then you get 1986 is the wine. It is estate bottled. It means they put it in, they, they bottle it on their estate with their wineries. They did the bottling themselves. Some people source, you know, outsource bottling. It doesn't say the name of the grapes, though. It just says Reunion. A little trademark. They copyrighted that name. And it says underneath that, 
red table wine from Napa Valley. So this did come from Napa, the specific area within California, so that makes it a little bit more expensive, a little bit more sort of nuanced, a little more specific characteristics. But all they're telling you is that it's red wine. That's all they have to tell you legally. They don't have to tell you what's in it. We do happen to know that this is a blend of Cabernet and a few other things, but they're going off, when, when a winery does something like this, they're trying to brand something, they're trying to build a name for themselves. Say, when I have Reunion, I know it tastes like this. I'm not drinking Cabernet, I'm drinking Reunion. Oh, and it, always, it always also says somewhere on the bottle how big the bottle is. Regular bottle size is 750 milliliters. It has to say that on the bottle. It can be in tiny letters, it can be on the front, it can be on the back. It's got to be on there somewhere. Not really important, but that's on the label. If you know how big a bottle is, you got a good start. All right, so that's about it. That should get us through California. So get out there and drink some good wine. Or beer. Yeah. <laughs>